Hello, my fellow patriots. This is Alex with Disabled Vets Perspective, and I'm getting ready to crack open a uh, an axle here. Just working on my son's car, trying to get him up and running. And I figured I'd jump on here for a minute and chat with you as long as you can hear me. Right, um, I'm calling this one Roundup is Beginning. But I'm also going to introduce you to a uh, something else that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be uh, starting another channel just because of what I'm doing right now. Uh, my son bought an older truck, 2006, a van. And uh, it's going to need a lot of doctoring, you know, over time. So I figured it, since I'm a half-ass mechanic and really don't know what the hell I'm doing most of the time I learn as I go it might be a good idea for other people that are forced into mechanicking without you know with no choice you can't go to the garage every time you need something in this case the uh the axle that my son had under his van was uh was completely shot and I don't even know if you would be able to see I wish I could get this thing to turn around for me that would be so nice, just to be able to flip the screen at will, but there's no will here, so anyway, don't know if you can see it, but there's two axles there, and one of them has about an eighth inch deep groove in it, because the bearings were blown out, and the guy kept driving it, so it was basically cutting the wheel off, and now we've, I bought a, uh, a whole new axle body and assembly and rear end the whole thing about it over in Jacksonville and my son bought it I paid for it he's paying me for it but um it's cheaper to do it this way just pull off the parts that are working like that is all smashed up and his is all good so you pull the parts off that you want to get rid of and put on the good parts and then put the thing back under the van instead of paying a fortune for the axle and everything else that you have to buy to get it done you want to be able to spend as little money as possible especially when you're talking about something that is a 2006 because it's old enough it doesn't need to have thousand dollar labor costs on it if it was a brand new computerized car I would say yeah but with it being being an old wagon, it's not worth it. So the new channel, I'm putting up a thing right now for suggestions on a name for it with the idea and the understanding that it is going to be done by a learn-as-you-go mechanic that might be able to help others learn as you go. I'm looking for a name for the channel. And... Your input will help that, but obviously this would be a video that would be a good candidate for the channel, but I can't introduce a new channel with the channel. I got to get get to a point where I'm, uh, people know about it, and then they can tell their friends about it. They can say, hey, go look at that idiot. If that idiot can put something together like this, pretty much anybody can. So... I'm hoping that it'll help. I want to I want to help others save a fortune on the costs of going to a garage because this stuff is not hard. There's nothing about this. I mean, when you get into the computers, yeah, that's way above my league. But when we're dealing with mechanical moving parts, I can I can handle that. So, that's the idea. And any suggestion on a name for the channel, I would appreciate it. And I can even, on the, the first video that I do on my new channel, I can give the, uh, acknowledge the person by pinning a, uh, pinning a comment and give credit to the person that came up with the best name for the channel. Obviously, I'm still going to be doing my uh, my political stuff, the information that I 
already do, and that will be on this channel always. But my not so shady tree mechanic, I would like to put on a channel where everybody can get something out of it and people don't feel like they're um, not invited because of their political stance or whatever. I mean, hell, even the people that come to this channel, I don't care what their political leanings are. I mean, they can enjoy what I have to say or not. But my goal is to educate people, not to criticize. But there are some idiots out there that really do need to be criticized. So I don't hesitate when, the, when it needs to be done, that's for sure. But anyway, so... You got it. You got the uh, the information. It's going to be a new channel. I'm going to be working on my Jeep. I'm going to be uh, doing my upgrades on my Jeep on that channel. <coughs> uh, when my son has issues with his van, we'll do some videos on repairing that as we go. But uh, that's that part. Now, I wanted to bring up something that concerns me slightly because I see it happening, and if you guys are aware of Agenda 21, you may also be aware that one of the plans of Agenda 21 is to round up the population and put them into extremely high-density population centers, and I kind of see that getting ready to happen, and the reason I say that is because I watched uh, Headlines with a Voice today, that woman will lay it down. She gives it to you whether you like it or not. And she don't hold back. And that's good. That's what you that's what this should be. There shouldn't be any flowers and unicorns with rainbows blowing out their ass when it comes to the stuff that is going on around us. Now, what she was talking about was a homeless community in Texas. And this homeless community just happens to be owned by the city little little shacks that people can get into and what's happening is their homeless population is growing and it's going to explode when the uh, memorandum on uh, or moratorium rather on their rent expires and then all of a sudden these people have to pay rent they're probably going to end up having to pay back rent which means there will be people all of a sudden homeless all over the place. Well, the city has already figured out how they can get people rounded up because they put them in these homeless communities. And these are little bitty shacks, basically a bed, a desk, and a heater with an air conditioner. Well, if you want to go to the toilet, you got to go somewhere else you, inside the park to go to the toilet. So, not exactly ideal. But what they're doing is they're conditioning people to live in small spaces. And as they get more homeless people and they get them out of their houses and get them out of their apartments, they'll get them used to living small. And then all of a sudden they'll build something, some extravagant building with shoebox type uh, or honeycomb type habitats. You want to know what those are? Look up the Beehive Hotels of Japan. Look up the uh, the living conditions in China for some of these people that work in the uh, factories. And you will be surprised at how small a space these people live in. And that's what they're going for here. High-density, massive population centers that they can have complete control of the person. And these homeless centers with these tiny homes is just exactly how they get people conditioned enough to to do what they want to do with them so it's starting they're going to be rounding the people up putting them into population centers and then they're going to basically control every aspect of their life and all they have to do is what they're doing now get people started getting used to it and then squeeze them out of their houses. Look at the electric bills in Texas. Those electric bills are astronomical. And I don't know, 
all that many working class people that could take an electric bill like some of the ones that I've seen and be able to pay it with any with any realistic income. So there will be houses seized and it'd be interesting to see if they're going to be seized by the the owners of the electric company or if they're going to be just abandoned because they have no more heat, no more power, no more water, that kind of thing. Because that comes with electric. But they get the people out of the houses, they get them used to these population centers, and then they take control of the rest of their lives, and then they move them into the high-density villages. And they take all of their personal possessions away because you can't have any in these little tiny homes. There's no room for them. So they get people used to living with nothing, and they say, oh, well, if you need that, we can issue it to you. And then you get used to basically having things loaned to you that all belong to the government. And once people get used to it, it's easier to move to the next phase. This is just a warning. It's coming. Now... I don't know how quickly they'll move on this, but as you guys have seen in the last couple of months, they're moving pretty fast on stuff. They really are trying to, to bring on their new world utopia, and they're trying to do it as quickly as they can. So it just won't surprise me if you see these kind of changes happening in the next few months, because... They already have a launch, basically. They're already moving in that direction. So, I don't know what to say about it. I just think that it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they move forward with all this. And all I can say is beware. Be ready to defend what you've got because they're going to try and take it from you. They're going to try to consolidate you into small spaces and make you like it. Personally, I don't like it. But I'm prepared out where I live to basically survive without a utility grid. Not everybody can do that. But if you can, you can get yourself to the point where you can handle what you need to handle, whether you have support from your local utilities or not then you'll be in a much better position and I, all I can say is it's going to probably get harder out there before all of this reset takes place until we can reach the beginning of Nasera, then we got to deal with all of their games that they're going to play and we got to sit back and wonder why the hell they haven't moved forward with this yet what is their what are they waiting for I just, I got to hope that they're going to do something soon, because while they're not doing anything, the left is still running with their Agenda 21, and until we can get a grip on that and get a stop to it, they're just going to keep plowing through, whether it's a show or not. You know, they, they want us to, everybody to say, oh, well, relax, it's just a show, but while they're doing this show, people are suffering. It's... It's not fair to the ones that are awake to have to wait on the ones that refuse to wake up. They need to wake their ass up or they need to be left behind and figure it out on their own. Because it's getting bad. Ugh. Ugh. Well, shit. But anyway, that's really what I got for you guys today. I just want you to think about it and look at the way things are happening around us and realize that they're, they're plowing through with their thing and we have things happening in the background. You hear that all the time. But while they're happening in the background, real life people on the foreground are suffering. It's time to stop this shit and figure it out. But anyway, that's what I got. Again... Name my new channel. It's all up to you guys. And I'll, I'll, I'll pick one. So I ain't scared. <clears throat> but 
If you like what I have to say, make sure you hit the like button, tell your friends about me, have them subscribe to the channel. When I get the new channel up, we'll see how many of you want to watch a idiot mechanic stumble his way through one project after another, and we'll have some fun doing it. Anyway, that's what I got for now. But y'all, stay in the fight.